Go ahead and open up your Bibles with me this morning to Matthew chapter 13. Matthew chapter 13 and we'll get there in just a moment. And this is our fifth part on a series that I've entitled Bless Me. Ja me oleme viiendas osas seerias, seerias, mille nimeks ma olen pannud õnista mind. Say bless me. Ütle õnista mind. Õnista Amen. Mind. And isn't that, that a lot of times our, our heart desire? Ja see vahest ei ole mitte meie südame igatsus. And there's just something on the inside of each and every one of us that wants more. Ja midagi on meie süd- iga ühe südames, mis tahab enamat. And, and I think we're created by God. Ja ma usun, et meid on Jumala poolt loodud. To have a supernatural desire for his blessing in our life. And many times when we have that desire we tend to look at everybody else's responsibility and not ourselves. And we think, well, you know, I want to be blessed and so I want my government to bless me. Et näiteks et me vaatame et mina tahan olla õnnistatud seega ma tahan et minu minu, minu riigi valitsus õnnistaks mind. I want to be blessed so I want my 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 parents to bless me. Et mina tahan olla õnnistatud siis ma tahan et minu vanemad õnnistaksid mind. I want to be blessed so I want my leaders to bless me. Et ma tahan olla õnnistatud ma tahan et meie juhid õnnistaks mind. My boss. Et minu ülemus my pastor, õnnistaks mind. Minu pastor. My friend. Minu sõber. You know, I want God to bless me. And so we put the, 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 all the, the pressure on everybody else and everything else. Trying to walk in what God has placed in our heart as a desire. When reality is it is totally up to us according to the Bible to walk in the blessings of God. Kuigi Biibli kohaselt on see vastada soopis teissugune teist, teist pidi, mis, mis, mis Biiblis on kirjutatud. It's up to us to walk in the blessings of God. And so we, we're finding out more and more how this can come to pass in our life. And when we're talking about really a principle of honor. And it's, it's something that we must give to those that are around us. And how we, are, how we adjust ourselves in this principle of honor. It is going to determine how blessed you and I are going to be in life. And honor is something that must be given. And for you to give honor to something or to someone. Someone, you're going to have to recognize it as something to be honored. And the truth is this, is that everyone has something on the inside of them that is worthy of honor. Everybody has a treasure that God has put in them. And the Bible tells us that God hides the good stuff in common things. Ja Bible räägib sellest, et Jumal on peitnud neid imelisi väärtusi tavalistes asjadesse. I don't know why he always does that. Ma ei tea, mis ta alati nii teeb. But that's how God says he'll do it. Aga, aga Jumal ütleb, et niimoodi ta teeb. He'll take asja. something very valuable and put it in something very common. Uh, ta võtab midagi väga väärtusti, kui paneb seda millegi väga tavalise sisse. And so that means that each and every person that is in this room so has something valuable from God. Igal inimesel, kes on täna siin ruumis, Jumal on midagi imelis sinu sisse pannud. Because we are very common people. Sest me oleme väga tavalised inimesed. Nobody on here on is like some superstar. Mitte keegi meest ei ole mingi superstar. And if you are a superstar, we're good. But but most of the time we are just common people. But God puts something of great value and of great worth on the inside of us. But I want to read this verse that we're kind of using as the foundation verse for for this series. Matthew chapter 13 and verse 44. This is Jesus speaking. Jesus is speaking here. And he said, The kingdom of heaven is like a treasure hidden in a field. Jesus said, This is what the kingdom of heaven is like. And he said, And a man found it, the treasure, and he hid it again, and then with great joy went and sold all that he had and bought the field. Ta läks rõõmuga ja müüs ära kõik, mis tal oli ning ostis selle põllu. And so Jesus is giving us this principle. This is how the kingdom is. Ja Jeesus toomeli sellise näite, milline on Jumala kuningriik. There's a field 
And there's a treasure. Et seal on põld ja seal on aared. And if you want the treasure, ja kui sina tahad seda aared, mis seal põllul on, you got to take the whole field. Ja sa pead võtma või ostma ära seda terve põllu. And this is kind of the principle that we have been looking at throughout this series. Ja see on see põhimõtte, mis me oleme uurinud terve selle seeria jooksul. Everybody has a treasure. Et igal inimesel on aare. But everybody has a field. Aga igal, igal inimesel on ka seine põld. Right? And the person's field should not push you away from looking for their treasure. Ja, see põld, mis sellel inimesel on, ei tohiks sind eemale nii ta tõugata sellest aardes, mis selles inimesest peitub. You should not look at somebody's field and say, well, I don't want their treasure. Sa ei peaks vaatama kellegi inimese põllu peale ütlema, et kuule, tema aared ma küll ei, ei taha. Because the way that God is going to bless us is in the treasure that he has placed in other people around us. Sest see viis, kuidas Jumal ennistab meid, on läbi nende aarete, mis teiste inimeste põllutel on. And so this is why God hides treasure in us. Ja selle pärast Jumal peidabki aaret meie sisse. So that we'll treat one another right. That we would honor one another the way that we should. Building one another up. Being happy and joyful when, when we see one another. When we honor one another, then we'll be able to access the treasure that is in each and every person. And the more honor that we show, the more treasure that we could receive. And then the more blessed we're going to be. And again, I'm not walking around saying, all right, Tulika, how are you going to bless me today? But when we show honor to people, their blessing Will, we will be able to access it. And so again, we've got to watch our heart in this. Because we could get to a place where we think, well, pff, I honored them and they didn't bless me. People are not your source. Right? Right? We need to honor everybody. But we trust God to get the blessing to us because God is our source. Amen. And he's going to use people and maybe not always the ones that we think. But God will use the people that he's put into our lives to bless us. Because as we've talked about it before, all blessings in life come through relationships. And so everyone has a treasure. And everyone has a field. And I have to honor you to get access to what you have. And, and everything that God gives you, ja kõik, mis Jumal annab sinule, he's going to put in somebody else. Ta, ta paneb teise sisse. And this is why God gives each and every one of us gifts and abilities. Ja pärast, Jumal annab igal ühele meist ja a, 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 Not for you. Mitte sinu enda jaoks. He gives us gifts and abilities to be able to bless others. Ta annab meile ande ja, ja andekust teiste, selleks, et õnnistada teisi. And so honor is a principle that is going to unlock the treasure in other people. Sega austus on see põhimõtte või prinsiip, mis, mis avab teiste inimeste aardi. And one problem that we have is this. Üks probleemides, mis meil on, on see. Is that we live in a culture filled with disrespect. Et me elame kultuuri, kultuuris, kus ei ole mingisugust austust. And people have been hurt so much in their lives that they try to hurt somebody before they get hurt. You know, I'm going to disrespect you before you disrespect me. I'm going to turn on you before you turn on me. You know, and so this is a lot of times the mentality we have in life because we've been hurt we are very defensive. And in the culture we live in, there's no respect for our government. There's no respect for laws. There, there's no respect for our parents. There's no respect for, for uh, the, the leaders that God has placed into our lives. But it is very important that we respect our government. That we respect our leaders and our parents. And God is wanting us to do that so that we could receive the blessings that he desires for us to have. Because these are the ones who are put in authority over us 
by God himself. Sest need on inimesed, kes on meelevalla alla pandud Jumala poolt. And you might not like the government that you have. Ja sulle võib-olla ei meeldi see valitsus, kes sul on antud. But it's the government that you have. Aga see on see ainus valitsus, mis sul on. Right? You might not like the parents that you got. Ja sulle võib-olla ei meeldi need vanemad, kes sul on. But it's the parents you got. Aga need on ainsad vanemad, kes sul on antud. Hello. Hello. And so it's some of the things we can't choose. Sega on asju, mida meie ei saa valida. But we still have to honor them because they are the ones that God has placed over. Aga sellegi poolest me ei peaks me austama neid, sest Jumal And we need to show honor and respect really to everyone. Ja tegelikult me peaksime näitama täiesti austrust kõikide vastu. And if you understand authority, ja kui sa mõistad meelevalda, you will understand why we need to do that. Siis sa saad aru sellest põhjusest, miks me peaksime seda tegema. And when we and one of the things is this when you honor somebody who is not living honorably. Ja sest näiteks kui sina austad kedagi, kes ei ei ela austust väärselt. I believe in time that those people will rise to a higher level in your presence. Siis ma usun et ühel hetkel need inimesed saavad tõusta kõrgemale tasemele sinu ees because they want to live worthy of the honor that you show to them sest nad tahavad elada vastavalt sellele aule ja aule ja austusele mis sina neile näitad and so again honor can cause others to rise to a higher standard of living austamine võib aidata inimestel tõusta kõrgemale tasemele but anything that is a source of life aga üks kõik mis asi on nende elu allikas this is what god demands and requires us to honor on alati midagi mida jumal igas või tahab et meie austaksime now in exodus chapter 20 and verse 12 uh, uh, teine mooses raamat 20. peadukki ja 12. salm it's it says god said this honor your father and honor your mother jumal ütles et austa oma oma ema ja austa oma isa and if you will do that you're going to live a long time on the earth ja kui sina teed seda siis sa elad kaua siin maa peal so we honor that that gives us life et kui sina austad seda mis annab sulle elu and we will live long on the earth siis sa saad elada kaua siin maa peal god said in malachi chapter 1 and verse 6 ma nakki ja ismeses peadukis 6. salmis He said if I am your father and if I am your master then where is my honor and where is the respect due me and, and so you know again God is the one who gives life and so we are to honor God. Siga me peaksime austama ka Jumal. We're to honor our mom and our dad, we're to honor our God. Me peaksime austama oma oma ema ja isa, me peaksime austama oma Jumala. And God said this in in 1 Samuel chapter 2 and verse 30. Ja esimese Samueli raamatus teises peadukis 30. salmis. He said those who honor me, I will honor. Ja mõtlen seda neid, keda et kes mind austavad, neid austan mina. You want to be honored? Kui sina tahad, et sind austatakse. You need to start honoring your God. Siis sa peaksid hakkama austama oma Jumalat. Honoring your God by the way that you live, by the way that you talk. Austama Jumalat läbi selle, kuidas sa elad, läbi selle, kuidas sa räägid. When you worship. Kui sa ülistad. That you you would worship from your heart. Et sa ülistad oma südamest. I pray that you don't come in here and read words on a screen. Väga loodan, et sa ei tule siia lihtsalt selleks, et lugeda mingit sõnu seina peal. But that you would let these words come from your heart as you honor God with your worship. Aga lasta nendel sõnadel tulla oma südamest, kui sa austad Jumalat. And so as we honor honor God. Sega kui me austame Jumala. Honor our government. Austame oma valitsus. Honor our boss. Austame oma ülemust. Honor our spiritual leaders. Austame oma vaimseid juhte. God will bless us. Siis Jumal saab õnnistada meid. He said if you honor me I will honor you. Ütleb, et kui sina austad mind, siis mina austan sind. But if you despise me I will think less of you. Aga kui sina põlgad mind, siis 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 ma ei mõtle sinu hästi. And so so one of the the things that the Bible says is is this. Üks asjades mida Bible Something that's not real comfortable for a pastor to say. Ole nii, väga mugav asi pastoril. But the pastor says those that teach you the Bible, they're worthy of double honor. Those who teach you the word, they are worthy of double honor. And so we honor our God, we honor our mother and our father, but our pastor we're supposed to give double honor to. Now you might not like that, but it's in the Bible. Alright, so you need to honor me. You better not talk bad about me. And if you, you know, if you have an opportunity to talk bad about me, just keep your mouth shut because I want to honor him. Ja, 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 kui, kui, kui sul tekib võimalus rääkida midagi halba kellegele minu kohta, siis siis oma suu kinni ja austa mind selle läbi. But I love to show honor to the people that have spoken into my life spiritually. Aga mulle väga meeldib austada neid inimesi, kes on vaimelikult minu ellu rääkinud. I love to honor the guests that come that we have 
to preach in our church. And a, of, in a couple of months, we're going to have a guest minister come in, and I want us to bless him big. Because when we give big to our guests, that's showing them honor for taking their time to come and to teach the word. But, you know, Authority is something that a lot of people have a hard time with. Especially when we're younger. You know, when we're young, we don't like authority, do we? But what happens as you grow? As you grow, you begin to realize authority is important. When I was 15, I didn't want anybody to tell me what to do. Because I was a man. Don't you tell, I'm 15 now. And I know, what, I know how everything is. But the older I got, the smarter my mom and dad got. Right? And then I began to realize, they're a lot smarter than I thought five years ago. And instead of living in rebellion to that authority, I began to say, okay, Dad, what would you do in this situation? And so we, we, we need to learn how important authority is for us in our lives. And those of you who are teenagers, you need to realize this. Mom and dad are strict because they understand the, the, the road you're going down. They're strict. They're, they give rules. Because they know the road you're going down. And they love you. And they know there's consequences if you live wrong. And the rules that they give you are to help you to live right. But then as, as, as you're growing up, it is your choice to listen to them and walk in wisdom or to reject that authority and face the consequences in your own life. But parents are given to us to guide us in our lives. So that we can make wise decisions on our own. Because parents are not always going to be there by our side watching over us. And as we train our kids I think one of the things you need to do is ask them questions. You know, if you see them watching something on TV that, that's not really biblical, you don't need to walk in and turn off the TV and say, all right, go to your room. That's not a way to teach your kids. But if you're watching a show that, that you know, which is most of the shows today where the people on TV aren't living according to the Bible. Just ask him a question. What does the Bible say about what they're doing? What does what does the Bible say about the way that they're talking? Mida Bibel räägib nende elustiili kohta. The way that they're talking. You know, what does the Bible say about that? And let them answer you. Let them begin to develop a filter for themselves. And then ask them, well, why do you think that the Bible says that? And if they say, I don't know, this is an opportunity to teach them. Teach them why it is good for us to live a godly life. Because God does not give us rules just for rules' sake. He gives us rules because this is the best life for us. To live. This will protect us and for our future. And so He gives us these things through authority. But then it is up to us whether we choose to accept that authority in our life or not. And, and one person 
person that we could see in the Bible who uh, was was very honorable. Uh, üks uh, inimene Biiblis, kes on väga austusväärne. Was David, King oli, David. Oli kuningas Taalet. But he was, he was a man of honor even as a child. Aga ta oli uh, au, aunine mees ka oma lapsepõldas. And we see that throughout David's life he, he would show honor to those that were around him. Ja me võime näha, et läbi taamete elu ta austas uh, kõiki, kes ta mõimber oli. And King Saul was one that David honored highly. Ja kuningas Saulus uh, oli, oli üks... Uh, Üks mees, keda taavet eriti kõrgelt austas. Now, Saul was not always honorable, ja nüüd, uh, worthy of honor. Ja Saul ei olnud alati väärt seda, seda au. But David made a choice, I'm going to honor my king. Aga taavet otsustas, et mina austan oma kuningat. Because David at that time, he was 12, 13, 14 years old. Ja taavet siis oli 12, 13, 14 aastat vana. And, and he, he would honor his king because he was not yet king. Ja ta austas oma kuningat, kuna tema veel ei olnud kuningas. And most people didn't know that God had already anointed him to be the next king of Israel. Ja inimesed ei teadnud, et taavet oli juba võitud uueks Israeli kuningaks. And so he honored the king. Sega tema austas oma kuningat. And then King Saul got jealous of David because people liked David. David. Siis kuningas Saul muutus armukadaks David. Taavete suhtes selles, et ta meeldis inimestele. Uh, and, and he tried to kill David. Ja siis üritas tappa Taavetit ära. And David ran away. Ja Taavet põgenes ära. And he ran away and he went into a cave where he found some other men in a cave. Ja ta põgenes ära ja põgenes ühte koopasse, kus ta leidis veel ühed mehed. And these men that were in the cave, they were hurt and they were broken. Ne mehed, kes seal koopas olid, need olid mehed, kes olid haiget saanud, need täiselt murtud. They were unhappy men. Nad ei olnud üldsegi just rõõmsalt mehed. They too were running. Nad olid samamoodi põgenemas. Because they were all in debt. Sest nad olid kõlk võlgased. And so this is not really the kind of friends that you would choose to have if you could choose friends. Sega kui sa saaksid sõpru valida, siis see ei ole just selline salk sõpru, keda sa tahaksid endale. You know, a bunch of unhappy, broke, you know, messed up men. Need masenduses, täiesti võlgades mehed. But then, you know, this is probably not the kind of church you would want a pastor. Could you choose your church? But we see later on that the names of these men are written in 2 Samuel chapter 23. Starting with verse 8, it lists the name of these men that were in this cave. And these men who entered this cave that they were broken in unhappy. Ja ja need mehed, kes olid selle sel koopas, nad olid murtud ja ja ei olnud üldse kõnnelikud. They were in debt. Nad olid võlgedes. These men the Bible says became David's mighty men. Nendes meeses sai Daaveti võimsad võimsad sõdalased. And this list of names are the men that David found when he ran into this cave to hide. Ja see nimekiri meestest, kes Daavet leidis, on need samad, kes kes olid sel koopas. And so being with David, these men began to become like David. Sega Taavetiga koos aega veetes need mehed hakkasid muutuma Taaveti sarnaseks. And when David showed up there was something within him that they were drawn to. Ja kui Taavet ilmus nende keskele siis midagi oli Taavete sees mis tõmbas neid mehi tema poole. And I think what they were drawn to was the honor that David walked in. Ja muusun et üks asi mis mis tõmbas neid Taavete poole oli see au ja austus mis Taavet oli nende suhtes. David honored those that were that were in his presence. Kes olid tema ligioos. He always did that. Ta alati austas. And, and, and when, when they began to see that it began to change them. Ja kui nemad hakkasid seda nägema siis see hakkas muutma neid. They began to rise to the honor that David David was giving to them. Ja hakkasid tõusma selle au vääriliseks, mida Taavet neile juba andis. And and my question for you is this. Minu küsimus sulle on see. When you enter into a tough situation. Ja kui sina sisenad keerulisse või raskesse olukorda. Does that tough situation change you? Siis kas see raske ja keeruline olukord muudab sind? Or when you enter into that situation do you change the situation? Või kui sina läheb selles keerulisse ja raskesse olukorda, kas sina muudad selle olukorda? Will the situation get off and corrupt you? Ja kui kas see olukord, mis sinu elu tekib, hakkab sind kuidagi korrumpeerma? Or are you going to be able to walk in there and be able to change the atmosphere? Või sina saad olla selles olukorras ja muudad kogu atmosfääri. And we see that, that there was a relationship that David developed between himself and these men that God put into his life. Aga me näeme, et Taavet hakkas arendama seda suhet nende meestega, kes Jumal tema elu tõi. And through honor. 
ja läbi austuse through honor towards one another läbi austuse ka üksise vastu they were able to rise to to the, the highest place in the land sai nad tõusta selle maa kõige kõrgemasse paika they all became mighty men for god nendest kõige said vägevad sõdalased jumala jaoks but i want to read out a second samuel chapter 23 i just want to read a part of this story ma tahaksin lugeda ühe jupi sest loost teise saamuli raamatus 23. peadukis i want us to see how these guys honored David. Ma tahan, et me näeksime seda, kuidas need mehed austasid Daavidi. And in 2 Samuel chapter 23, I want to start reading here with verse 15. Ja Samuel raamat 23. peaduk ja 15. salm tahaks lugeda. You know, these guys had, had been at, at war. Need tüübid olid sõjas käinud koos Daavidiga. David was tired. David oli väsinud. He was, you know, he came and he sat down and, and this is what he said. Ta tuli ja istus maha ja see oli see, mis ta ütles. He said uh, um, David longed for water and he said oh that someone would give me a drink from the water from the well near the gate of Bethlehem. Teise Daavidi kas teise Samuli raamat 23:15. Daavidil tuli janu ja ta ütles, kes annaks mulle vett juua Betlema kaevust, mis on värava juures. And so you know he was tired he sat down and he just said man I would love a drink from the well of Bethlehem. Tali 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 väsinud Jesus ma ütles et ma tahaksin sinna kaavast hea meelega juua vett praegu. How many have ever said something like that? Kui palju on öelnud midagi sellest oh ma tahaksin. You know something that you desire. Et midagi mida sa igat. Oh man I, I would love to be able to just have a big old hamburger right now. Ah praegu ma täega tahaks mingi sellest pirakat hamburgeri süüa. It's almost 12 I want I want a hamburger. Kell on peaaegu 12 kui täega purs sisu on. You know or, or you know you say something like that. Ütle midagi sellest. Not that you want to go out and get one. Mitte et sa just imlingi, ma ta tahaksin kohe minna burgerit osta. Man, that sure would be nice. Aga see oleks ju tore. And so David, he just said this out of a desire of his heart. Ja ta vaid ütles nii-öelda sellise südame igatsuse välja. Not giving a command to anybody. Ei anna mitte kellegile mingisugust käsku. But just speaking his desire. Aga lihtsalt rääkis, mis igatsus ta oli. And look at how these guys responded. Ja vaata, kuidas need mehed siin reageerisid sellele. In verse 16, it says, and so the three mighty men, they broke through the Philistine lines, drew water from the well near the gate of Bethlehem and carried it back to David. Yeah, go ahead. Ah, siis tungsid kolm kangelast listid ja leeri ja nad ammutasid vett Betlema kaevust värava juurest kantsid ja tõid Davidile. What, what happened here? Mis siin juhtus? These guys overheard David's desire. Ne mehe kuulsid seda, mis igatsus oli Daavetil. And they looked at each other and they said, if that's what he wants, let's go get it. Ja vaatsid üksesid otsa, et see kule, kui see on see, mida Daavet tahab, siis lähme ja toome selle talle. They ran through the enemy lines because they were surrounded by enemy. Nad olid vaenasse poolt sisse piiratud ja nad tormasid seal nende vahelt läbi. They went into a city that was... That was Uh, surrounded by enemy. Ja läksid sinna linna, mis oli nende vaenasse poolt sisse piiratud. They got the water that he desired. Nad sai selle vee kätte, mida Daavid igatses. And then they fought their way all the way back to David. Nad võitsid oma tee läbi nende vaenasse seest läbi, et, et jõuda Daavid juurde tagasi. How many know that that's that's like overboard honor? But for you to to get that from somebody, how many know you've had to show something? David obviously had shown them honor. David had obviously shown them there's nothing I wouldn't do for you guys. And the way they responded to that is there's nothing I won't do for my leader. Nemad vastasid sellele oli see, et, et ei ole midagi, mida meie ei teeks oma juhi jaoks. And so because of their honor and the respect for their leader, they went and got the water. Ja no sellele austusele ja respektile, mis neil oma juhi suhtes oli, nad läksid ja tõid selle vee. The last part of verse 16 here, it says, but, but, but David refused to drink it. Instead, he poured it out before the Lord. Ja kui esimene saime lõpus on kirjas, aga, ta, aga Taavet ei tahnud seda juua, vaid valas selle isandale. And verse 17 says, far be it from me, O Lord, to drink this. Is it not the blood of men who went and risked their lives? And David would not drink it. And such were the exploits of the three mighty men. Ja ütlesid jäägu see minust kaugele, isand, et teeksin seda, see on nende meeste veri, kes käisid oma inge hinnaga, sellepärast ei tahnud seda juua, seda tegid need kolm kangelast. And so David honored these men and they risked their lives. Taamed austas neid mehi, sest nemad täiega riskisid oma eluga. But when they came back, David poured out that, that, that water that they risked their lives for as an offering to God. Aga kui, 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 kui need mehed tõid taavetile selle 
selle vee, siis David valas selle välja, kui ofri Jumalale. Have you ever given a gift to somebody and they took the gift and threw it away? On keegi sulle kunagi kinkinud mingisuguse kingituse, sa oled võtnud selle kingituse minema või saanud. You're like, why did I even go to the store and buy that? Ja sa mõte, kuule, miks ma üldse läksin pood üldse seda ostma? Why did I waste my time? Miks ma raistasin oma aega? They didn't even like it. Neil isegi ei meelinud see kingitus. And so, that's not what was happening here. I want you to understand. Aga ma tahan, et sa saaksid aru, et see ei ole see, mis siin toimub. They go and get David what he wanted, he just dumps it out. Taavet atis vett, nad läksid tõid ära ja nüüd taavet kalab välja selle. But he did it with honor. Aga ta tegi seda austus. I want you to understand his heart in doing it. Ma tahan, et sa saaksid aru sellest südame hoiakust, mis tal oli sellest. First of all, this water from Bethlehem was the most valuable thing at that moment in David's life. Esiteks. Tol hetkel see klaasidalis vett Petlema linnast oli taavete jaoks kõige väärtuslikum asi üldse. And he said he poured it out as an offering to God. Ja siin on kirjas, et ta valas selle välja tuues ohvri Jumalale. But his heart was also this. Aga tema süda oli ka selles. God, how can I drink from this water? Jumal, kuidas mina võin juua seda vett? The water that they risked their lives for. Seda vett, mille nimel nemad ristisid oma eluga. And while all these guys are sitting around dying, you know, with, with, with thirsty, the, I can't drink. Ja samal ajal, kui need teised vennad siin, siin on väsinud, ka tunnavad janu, kuidas mina võin? And so he did not want to become better than them just because that was his desire. See ka ta ei tahtnud muutada nendest vennadest nii-öelda paremaks, sest, sest ta tahtis olla selline. And the point is this. Ja punt, point selle taga on see. That David found some men who were not mighty men. Et taavet leidis mehed, kes ei olnud just nii-öelda kangelaslikud mehed. They were broke. Nad olid täiesti pankrotis. They were unhappy. Nad ei olnud üldsegi õnnelikud. They were dejected. Nad olid täiesti eemale tõugatud. They were depressed. Nad olid masenduses. And he found these guys that were not mighty and because of the principle of honor he caused them to become mighty men of God. Ja ta leidis need mehed, kes ei olnud üldsegi nii-öelda aulised ja ta austas neid ja nad muutasid Jumala vägevasteks sõdalast. David had a gift to be able to find the treasure and the people that God put in his life. Taavetil oli see and leida seda aaret teist inimeste südamest, mis Jumal oli sinna pannud. And I believe this is something that we could pray and ask God to help us with. Ja ma usun, et see on midagi, mida meie võime panuda Jumala käest, et ta meie seest teeks. That God help us to see and to recognize the treasure in the people's lives that you put into my life. Jumal aita mul näha seda aaret, mis sina oled teist inimeste elus pannud, kes on minu ümber. And David honored them. Ja ta aved austas neid inimesi. And they became mighty men. Ja need mehed said vägevastaks sellest. And we are to honor the people that God put in our lives. Ja meie peaks me austama neid inimesi, kes Jumal paneb meie elu. When we do, I believe they will rise. They will rise to a level of a standard of the honor that we place upon them. And God will use them to bless us. And God will use us to bless them. And so this is a principle that can change, I believe, can change our lives. This is a principle that can change our church. This is a principle that can change our city. This is a principle that could change change our nation if we would begin to honor one another in this way. And so today I, wanna, I want us to look at, a, at another kingdom principle here. And if you would turn with me to Galatians chapter 4. Galatians chapter 4 and verse 1. Galatians chapter 4 and verse 1. Galatians chapter 4 and I'll start reading here with verse 1 Paul is talking to them about being the, the, the sons of God the children of God and he said but what I'm saying is this as long as an heir is a child he is no different from the slave although he owns the whole estate Galatlastele 4.1. Ma tahan öelda, nii kaua kui pärja on väeti laps, ei erine ta milleski, milleski orjast, ehkki ta on kõige isan. And so when we talk about um, harvest, no, sega, kui me räägime näiteks lõikusest, harvest is a temporary thing that comes to us. Lõikus on, on asi, mis tuleb ajutiselt meie. Harvest comes from time to time to time. Lõikus tuleb aega ajalt. And, and you must keep sowing and you must keep giving to keep reaping a harvest. Ja selleks, selleks, et osa võtta lõikus, et selleks jääb pidevalt külvama ja siis sa saad lõigata, siis sa külvad ja uuesti lõikad. 
And if you, if you will continue to be a sower in your life, ja kui sina jätkad olemas külva, külvaja, then you will not have a dry season in your life. Siis sinu elus ei tule kuiva põua perioodi. And this is, this is a principle of God that we find in his word. Ja me, me näeme seda, et Jumala kuningriigis asjad toimivad samamoodi. That if we will continue to sow, we will continue to reap. Ja mida jätkuvalt sina külvas, seda rohkem sa saad lõigata. And so, you know, again, we're God's harvest. Sega jällegi, me ei oleme samamoodi Jumala lõikus. God gave his only son to die. Jumala andis oma that we might all receive life that we would become the sons of God so he gave one son to receive many sons and so this is the principle of God but uh, the when, when we talk about being an heir, it's different than just reaping a harvest. An heir is something that belongs to you. When you are an heir and you receive something because you are an heir, Kui sina oled pärija ja sa saad midagi selle pärast, et sina oled pärija. An inheritance has nothing to do with what you do. Siis pärandusel pole midagi pismis sellega, mida sina teed. An inheritance is based on who you are. Pärandus põhineb sellel, kes sina oled. No nii. Not about, well, if I sow, then I'll get my inheritance now. Asi ei ole selles, et kui mina külvan, siis ma saan oma, oma pärandi. No. Ei ole. It's who I am. Ma ei selles, kes oled sina. What what is my what's my name? Mis on minu nimi? What what family am I part of? Mis perekonda ma kuulun? Who's your daddy? Kes on sinu isa? Right? On and, and you've got a great daddy. Ja sul on hea isa, ma ütlen. Your heavenly father is awesome. Ja sinu taevane isa on nimeline. Amen. Hallelujah. And when we when we know that we are his child. Ja kui me teame, et me oleme tema lapsed. There are things that belong to us because we are an heir. Siis on asju, mis kuuluvad meile tänu sellele, et me ei oleme pärijad. We are, the Bible says that we are co-heirs with Christ Jesus. Kiibel räägib, et me oleme kaas pärijad koos Kristus ja Jeesusega. What does that mean? Mida see tähendab? That means whatever belongs to Jesus. See tähendab seda, mis iganes kuulub Jeesusele. Belongs to us. Kuulub ka sinule. And, and, and whatever Jesus operated in. Ja milles iganes toimis Jeesus. You can operate. Sina saab toimida nende samades asjades. Whatever Jesus had, you can have. And, and, and if, you know, if, if I understand that, when I see you coming, I can't just see you, but I need to also see Jesus in you. Because if all I see is you, you and your field, then I'm going to be very limited in what I can receive from you. But the Bible says this, if two or three will agree on anything, then it shall be given to you. If, if, you, if two or three agree on anything, it'll be given to you. It'll be given whatever you ask. And so uh, when we ask God, when we go to God as his children, and when we agree, according to what belongs to us as an heir, God will give that to us. And so God is not trying to, to hide anything from you or to keep anything from you. It is God's pleasure that he says to give you good gifts. He loves his kids. He wants to bless his kids. And God is trying to get his blessings to you. But one of the principles that God says in his word is we need, we need one another to walk in the blessings of God. Põhimõtte, millest, millest piibele räägib, on see, et me peaksime... We need one another to walk in the blessing of God. And there, there will be uh, your, your key to blessing in somebody else. And sometimes we need to say, would you pray with me about this? Pray with me concerning that need in my life. And when we pray according to God's will, then he can bless us. It says that one could put a thousand to fight, two could put ten thousand to fight. Uh, one could put a thousand to fight, two could put ten thousand. To fight? Uh, we could make them run away. Ah, et, et, uh, panna tuhat pagenema, panna All right, anyway, that's the Bible principle. Kaks. 
Alright, so, so, uh, way to go. Sorry, Sorry about that. Uh, so, again, when we work together, we can get a whole lot more done. When we work together, we're going to be a whole lot more blessed. And the Bible says where there is unity, that's where the blessing of God is. That's where the blessing of God is. You know, the blessing is not just a verb. Blessing is an, also a noun. Right? It's not just a verb. It's also a noun. And in other words, there is a blessing that can be upon you. It's one thing to receive a blessing. But there is a blessing that could rest upon you and become, become part of, of a, of a place. And God said where there is unity, that is where my blessing is. Seal on minu õnnistus. That's why it's awesome for us to come to church. See pärast on hea, kui me käime koguduses. Because when we gather together as a church, kui me saame kokku kogudusena, in unity, oleme ühtuses, God's blessing is there. Ja Jumal õnnistus on seal kohal. There are places that God's blessing is and there are places that God's blessing is not. On kohti, kus Jumal õnnistus on ja on kohti, kus Jumal õnnistus ei ole. And we need to find the places in our life where we can access the blessings of God. Me peaksime leidma neid kohad oma elus, kus me saame ligi, ligi pääsu Jumal õnnistustel. And others are going to be our key to access the blessing. We've got to honor one another and come to unity to be able to receive more blessing from God. But as we keep reading here in Galatians chapter 4, look here in verse 2. Again, it's talking about this child who is no different than a slave, although he owns the whole estate. And in verse 2 it says, And he is subject to guardians and trustees until the time set by the father. He is under guardians. Ta on nende eeskostjate ja meelevaldade all. A child has to obey the guardians that are placed over him. Ja laps peab kuulatuma nendele aadnikele, kes, kes tema üle on pandud. And this is the principle. Ja põhimõtte on selles. That we are to, be, we are to come under. Et me peame olema millegi all. We are to come under. Me peaksime olema millegi all. Before we're going to go over. Enne kui me saame millegi üle olla. We need to become we need to become under someone. Before we're ever going to really be able to be over anyone. So say under. All right? You've got to come under. That's your job. And you need to be able to recognize those that you are to be under in your life. And so we come under to prove ourselves worthy to be over. And then we're able to go to that next level. And so this is, this is the principle of God here. He's trying to talk, teach us how we could walk in the blessings. Because even though we're, we're an heir and the whole estate belongs to us, We've got to reach a certain level of maturity. An heir has to reach their level of maturity to receive the blessing. And so what do we need to come under? Well, first of all, I think we all need to come under the word of God. We need to make the Bible, God's word, the first place in our lives. And we need godly men and women who are over us to help to train us. And again, we're not looking for perfect people because there are no perfect people. But we can find somebody who could be a godly example to us and to lead us in a godly way. And I believe this. I believe there's people in this room who you could have it all. Yeah. There's people in this room who could have everything. But because of immaturity, you don't walk in anything. 
Let me say that again. There's people in this room who could have it all. But because of immaturity, you're not walking in anything. I know it's going to be a little tough here today, but I, I want to encourage you to get blessed. You know me, I'm not a, I'm not a hard preacher. I, I, I'll lift you up before you go. I'll lift you up before you go. I'll lift you up before you go today. But because of immaturity, there are some things in our life that we have not yet accessed, myself included. And you have to reach a certain level of spiritual maturity before you could walk in the blessing that God has for you. You could say, I'm a joint heir with Jesus Christ. And that's a true statement. But you have got to come to a place of maturity before you can, you can walk in that inheritance. Until then, you're just a child and a child's like a slave. Even though you own the whole thing, you gotta, you gotta sit under your, your guardians. And so you need to mature so that your life can go better. That means we need to mature in the way that we live our lives. So that we can qualify for the blessings that God desires to give us. Remember, like I said earlier, you know, we can't expect everybody else just to be the ones to bless us. There are things we can do to qualify for the blessings of God in our lives. And for us to grow and for us to mature, the question is this, so what does God do? Well, he will put you under someone before he will put you over and let me just say this to you. It is a whole lot more important who you are under than it is who you are over. It is a whole lot more important for you who you are under than who you are over. Because who you are under will be the ones to cause you to rise to higher levels in your life. And so we need to make sure that we are living our life in a way where we are growing and and and. and increasing spiritually. You know, we think of Peter, who, he was a great man who ran the church. But, Jesus, but Peter was under Jesus before he ever ran the church in Jerusalem. In 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 1, Paul said this. Paul said, follow me as, and my example so Paul was a leader and he said follow me but then he said this as I follow Christ and the example that he gave alright follow me as I follow Jesus Paul was a leader but Paul was first a follower Paul wasn't first a leader and then a follower. He was a follower and then a leader. And, and, and this is what Jesus told us in Matthew chapter 28. Matthew chapter 28 verses 19 and 20. Some of the last words that he said. Some of the last words that Jesus said. Jesus said, go into all the world. To who? <laughs> go into all nations <laughs> and make disciples of all nations <laughs> baptize them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit <laughs> and then he said this <laughs> and teach them <laughs> go into all the world make disciples <laughs> and teach them <laughs> he did not say go into all the world and get people saved but I think that's what some churches think Jesus said. 
kogudused arvavad, et Jeesus ütles midagi sellist. I think that's what some Christians think that Jesus said. On seda palju kristlased mõtlevad, et Jeesus ütles niimoodi. Go into all the world and get people saved. Minge kõikele maailma saagi inimesed päästetud. Have them say the prayer to receive Jesus as their Lord. Aga lasta paljutavad ja ja kutsuvad Jeesus enda ellu elama ja siis on kõik korras. That's not what Jesus said. Jeesus ei öelnud seda. He said go make Disciple. What is a disciple? Kes on jünger? A disciple is a disciplined learner. Jünger on disciplineeritud õppija. That's what a disciple is. Võt see on jünger. A disciple is a disciplined learner. Jünger on disciplineeritud õppija. And so Jesus said, go into all the world and make disciplined learners. Ja Jeesus ütles, mingi kõikele maailma ja tehke disciplineeritud õppijaid. Why? Miks? So that they can grow. Selleks, et nad võisid kasvada. And mature. Ja küpseda. Spiritually. Vaimselt. So that they can begin to access the blessings that God desires for them to have. Selleks, et nad võiksid osa saada nendest õnnistustest, mis Jumal on enne jaoks. How is the world going to get blessed? Kuidas maailm saab olla õnnistatud? By seeking God. Läbi selle, et nad osivad Jumala. By going after God. Läbi selle, et nad ajavad taga Jumala. And we need people who are over us that will encourage us and teach us so that we can grow. Ja meil on vaja inimesi, kes oleks meie üle selleks, et me ei saaksime kasvada ja küpseda. And so God puts you under somebody else in your life. Jumal on sind sinu elus pannud kellegi alla. He will put you under a father. Ta paneb sind isa alla. He'll put you under a mentor. Ta paneb sind mingisuguse mentori alla. A pastor. Pastori alla. A teacher. Õpetaja alla. A coach. A treeneri alla. There's people that God puts in our lives on inimesi, keda Jumal toob meie elu. That we can come under so that we can learn. Kelle all meie saame olla ja õppida neilt. And it will help us to grow to a level of maturity. Ja see saab aidata meil jõuda küpsused asemeni. That God will be able to release the inheritance to us. Kus Jumal saab avalikustada meile selle päranduse, mis meile kuulub. You know, the... The richest man in in the world. Kõige rikkam inimene siin maa peal. His son is 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 heir to the whole fortune. Tema poeg on päri ja kõigele sellele varandusele. But when he's three years old, he's not running the show. Aga kui ta on kolme aastane, siis tema ei valitse kamada kõiki neid vägesid. When he's seven, he's not running the show. Kui ta on seitsme aastane, siis ta ei kamada kõiki neid vägesid. You know, when he comes to maybe 25, then he gets his inheritance. Okei, võibolla kui ta saab 25, siis ta saab osa oma pärandist. Then, you know, he could have all of a sudden millions of dollars to you. But he has to get to a place of maturity before the inheritance will be given. And God works on that same principle. You want to be blessed? Do you want to be blessed? <laughs> I want to be blessed. <laughs> then we need to grow and mature spiritually. And so there is a responsibility upon the guardian or upon the, the leader. And the responsibility is to be the voice of God and to be the example in people's lives. And to be an example. And cause those that, 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 that he's guardian over to grow. And there's also a responsibility upon us. That we would realize the blessing is in the voice of the guardian. Et meie mõistaksime seda, et ülevaataja sõnades on õnnistus. The guardian has a responsibility to be the voice of God. Et selle ülevaataja loo meelevalt Jumala poolt. But we have the responsibility to accept that what he is saying comes from God. Then we could rise to the potential. And so it's, it's not just what you hear, it's what you do. And we talked about this, I think, a little bit last Wednesday night. That it's not just the things that we hear that bless us, it's the things that we do that we will be blessed. And you know, so why do I teach the Bible like I do every time we come together? Because I want to help you to mature. I want to see you blessed. I want to see you walk in your inheritance. Because then you're going to be able to be used by God at a greater level. And it's going to be able to be a blessing to others. And in turn, you're going to be a greater blessing to me. And you should want me to grow. You should be praying and believing God that I would get better. 
sinä peaksi paluma ja uskuma, et, et sinun pastor saa paremmaks. Why? Miks? So that I can teach you better. Selleks, et ma saaksin õpetada sind paremini. So I can be smarter to help you to grow. Selleks, et mina saaksin olla targem ja arukam aitamaks sul kasvada. And when I walk in more of my inheritance, ja kui mina käin rohkem oma pärandusest, you're going to be blessed. Siis sina saad olla õnnistatud. When you walk in more of your inheritance, kui sina käid rohkem oma pärandusest, siis mina saan olla rohkem õnnistatud. And the people around us are going to be blessed. Ja inimesed meie ümber saavad olla õnnistatud. And this is what God is wanting from us. Ja see on miski, mida Jumal tahab meie jaoks. To become disciplined disciples, disciplined followers of Jesus. Ja me oleksime disiplineeritud jüngrid, disiplineeritud Jeesuse järgijad. And God wants you mature. Ja Jumal tahab, et sina oleks küps. And we need to get to a place where we obey because it is the right thing to do. Me peaksime jõudma sellest kohta, kus me kuuletume sellepärast, et see on õige asi, mida teha. You know, not, not obey just when we're inspired to obey. Ja mitte lihtsalt, et kuuletu, kui sul tuleb inspiraatsioon kuuletumiseks. And not just to obey when people are watching. Ja mitte lihtsalt kuuletada, kui inimesed vaatavad ja jälgavad siin. How many understand that? Kui palju saavad aru sellest? You know, when the teacher's watching, et okei, okay, kui õpetaja vaatab, siis ma istun siit. I'm sitting there. Siis ma istun seal. Ja teacher turns his back. Kui õpetaja pöörab selja mulle. I'm taking spit wads and throwing across the classroom. Siis ma viskan kuustu kummi üle terve klassi tooaja. I'm making, you know, crack jokes behind his back. Then tema tema selja taga nimedi viipi keeles nalja siit. But he turns back around and I... aga kui ta pöörab ringi, siis ma istun just. Now am I being the the right type of person? Okei, okay, kas ma olen õi 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 tüüpi inimene? No. Ei. I need to mature. I need to grow up a little bit. Ei, sellest tuleb edasi kasvada, sellest tuleb küpsemaks saada. So it's not just being mature when somebody's watching. Sega asi ole selles, et sa sinu tähelepanu on pööratud selle peale ainult siis, kui inimene vaatab sinu. It's not just obeying and doing right when you're inspired to. Ei ole lihtsalt, et sa kuuletud ja, ja õpid siis, kui sul on see inspiratsioon. You know, I should not have to inspire you to always tie. Mina ei peaks saati inspireerima sind selleks, et, et maksa kümnist. Or to serve. Või selleks, et teenida. Or, or to pray. Või selleks, et palvetada. Or to read your Bible. Või selleks, et lugeda oma piiblit. I should I shouldn't always have to inspire you to do what is right to do. Ma ei peaks alati inspireerima sind tegema neid asju, mida on õige teha. You should tithe and serve and pray because it is the right thing to do. Ja peaks on ma kümnist ja 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 lugen piiblit teenima selle pärast, et see on õige asi, mida teha. And and you know it's it's a low level of maturity when somebody has to be encouraged to do right. See on madal küpsuse tase, kui sind on vaja inspireerida seda, et tegema seda. That's the parent child relationship. See on see lapse ja lapse vanema vaheline suhe. But as the child grows the parent no longer has to you know my mom doesn't have to call me every day and say now make sure you brush your teeth before you leave the house et et laps peab kasvama suuremaks et minu ema näiteks ei pea mulle iga õhtu elistama et kui läb äri pesen nüüd ambad puhtaks you know don't don't forget to pay your bills kui lära oma unustama arveid mitte maksta and make sure you study so you have something to say on sunday ja tee kindlasti et sa õpid ka et sul püha pool oleks midagi öelda no i'm i'm Thank God I've grown to a level of maturity. Ma olen, ma olen that I can handle my life. Et ma saan oma elu hakkama, right? Okay. That's what God wants from us. See on miski, mida Jumal tahab meie jaoks. As we grow to a level et where we tasemele, where we don't need somebody to tell us what to do. Kus meil ei ole vaja, et keegi nii-öelda kamandaks meiks, meid ütleks, mida me peaksime tegema. But that we do it is right to do because it's the right. Vaid et me teeme neid asju, mis on õige teha, sellepärast, et see on õige asi, mida teha. And whether Pastor Barry comes to church today or not. Ja kas pastor Barry tuleb täna kogudusse või mitte? I'm going to come to church and I'm going to give. Mina tulen kogudusse, mina annan. And I'm going to come to church and I'm going to serve. Ja ma tulen kogudusse, mina teenin. That's a mature heart. Mut see on küpse süda. And so it's not because you're inspired to. Mitte sellepärast, et sul on mingi inspiratsioon. But it's because you get a heart to want to obey God and get his very best. Sellepärast, et sul on süda, mis tahab kuuletada Jumalale. And so maturity with God is something that we, we need to... to gain access to. See on küpsus Jumalaga, see on miski, mille, mille, mille poole me peaksime pürgima. And so again, I'm trying to get you blessed. Jällegi, ma tahan, et sa saaksid õnnistatud. And so how do we mature spiritually? Sega, kuidas me küpseme vaimelikult? Well, spiritual maturity is not based on time. Vaimne küpsus ei baseeru ajast. Spiritual maturity is based on two things. Vaimne küpsus põhineb ja baseerub kahel asjad. It's based on knowledge. Baseerub teadmistel. And understanding. Ja aru saamisel. Spiritual maturity is based on knowledge and understanding. Vaimne küpsus baseerub teadmistel ja aru saamisel. Not just knowing the Bible, but understanding how to apply the Bible. Mitte lihtsalt, et sa tead piiblid, vaid et sa tead ka, kuidas seda kasutada ja rakendada oma elus. Right? And so knowing and understanding causes us to grow into maturity. Teadmine ja aru saamine aitab meil jõuda küpsused, panemale küpsused asemele. And let me say it this way. Luba mõtle niimoodi. I know people that have been saved and come into church for 30 years. Ma tean inimesi, kes on olnud päästetud ja käinud koguduses 30 aastat. But they are very immature spiritually. Aga vaimselt on nad väga jäva küpsed. 
But I know people who have been saved for two years and they have become very mature spiritually. Because spiritual growth is based on your relationship with God. And, and, and it comes by living your life based on the word of God. It's not based on your feelings. If you live based on your feelings, you are dangerous. That whatever you feel, that's what you're going to do. You're a danger to yourself. And you're, and you're a danger to me. You're a danger to others around you. And if you make long-term decisions based on your emotions, you're going to live at a very immature level of life. And so we got to grow past just what I feel like doing. And then we need to begin to do things because it is the right thing to do. We obey God. And God, won't, and God wants us to be blessed. But God won't give you your inheritance until you mature. Are you a co-heir with Christ Jesus? Yes, the Bible says we all are. We all are. And what Jesus provided for us, it belongs to us. But it doesn't mean we all are walking in it. Because we have got to grow. We've got to get to a place that we could receive the blessing of God. And that we do that by beginning to live the word of God out in our lives. And this is God's principle that, that he goes by. If you will be faithful in what you know to do today, he will give you more tomorrow. He said this, if you will be faithful with little, I'll give you a lot. And so we need to understand that, that, that we, we have a responsibility for our own blessing. If you want to be blessed, and I think we all have that, like I talked about at the very beginning. You know, we all have a desire to have the blessing of God. Then there is a requirement from us by God. And when you understand your position, you could change your situation. When you understand your, 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 your position, you can change your condition. Now, your condition might not match your position. Your condition might be that you are sick. You have, you have sickness in your body. But your position is, is that you are healed in Christ Jesus. Right? Amen. And so your condition doesn't match your position. And you, if we will believe God, our sickness has to line up with the word of God and leave our body. Right? And so we need to understand who we are. And what we have as an inheritance from Jesus. Your healing does not belong to you based on you know, how much... You pray. Or how much you gave in the offering. No, we need to pray and ask God. It's, it's not about how much you pray for the missionaries. But are you talking to God about your health? Do you get the word of God in you, the promises of God concerning your health? Then you can begin to walk in the blessing You know, your condition might be that you have some lack financially. Your, your, your position, though, is that you are blessed by God. And when you understand your position, you can begin to change your condition. And in your financial situation, will have to change. You know, and somebody might say, well, you know, Pastor, I just don't believe in all that healing stuff. Don't worry about it. 
ära muret selle pärast. If you don't believe it, you're not going to have to deal with it. Kui sa ei usu selles, siis sa ei saa sellest kosa võtta. Well, I just, I just don't believe in all that prosperity stuff. Kule, tead, ma ei usu seda jõukuse värki. I don't worry about it. No, ära muret selle pärast. If, if you don't believe it, you don't have to deal usu, with it. Kui sa ei usu, siis sa ei pea sellega tegelema. You know, you could just stay right where you're at. Ja sinna, kui sa oled. And the rest of us, we're going to go forward. Me kõik edasi lähme küll. Because this is the principle that we talked about. Sest me rääksime sellest põhimõttest. What you respect will be drawn to you. See, mida sina austad, on sinu poole tõmbunud. And you will have the ability to access. Ja sul on ka ligi pääs sellele. But what you disrespect Aga see, mida sina ei austa, will be pushed away from you. Seda tõuatakse sinust teemale. And you will never have the ability to access. Ja sul ei ole kunagi ligi pääsu sellele. I want to believe the Bible belongs to me. Mina tahan uskuda, et, et Jumala sõna piibel kuulub mult minule. The promises of God belong to me. Jumala tõotused kuuluvad minule. That the Bible is God speaking into my life. Et piibel on Jumal rääkimas minuga. And so it is real to me. Sega see on reaalne minu jaoks. When I read this, it is alive. Kui ma loen seda, siis see on elav. And I want this to impact my life. Ma tahan, et see mõjutaks minu elav. So there are things that I can do to gain access to the blessings of God. Sega on asju, mida mina saan teha selleks, et saada osa Jumala õnnistusest. And the more that I grow and mature spiritually, ma tean, rohke ma kasvan ja saan küpsimaks vaimolikult, the more I understand what it is that God desires for me, seda rohke ma mõistan seda, mis Jumalal on minu jaoks, mida tema igatseb minu. And the more blessed I am in the way that I am able to live my life. Ja seda õnnistatum ma saan olla sellest visis, kuidas ma elan oma elu. I have problems just like everybody else. Ja mul on probleemid samamoodi nagu igal teisel liin. But I am able to walk in the blessing of God in every situation. Aga ma saan käia Jumala õnnistustest igas elu olukorras. And it just gets better and better. Ja see läheb ainult paremaks ja paremaks. But this is the thing. When God shows up, you need to, to recognize it. Kui Jumal ilmutab ennast, siis sa peaksid tuvastama seda. And you need to learn from it. Ja sa peaksid õppima sellest. You need to recognize God when he shows up in your life. Sa peaksid ära tunnma Jumala, kui ta ennast ilmutab sinu elus. And if we do not recognize God, ja kui me ei tuvasta Jumalat ära seal, then we're going to miss the blessings of God. Siis me paneme mööda kui Jumala õnnistust. If we don't recognize God and learn from our mistakes, kui me ei tuvasta Jumalat ära ja ei õppi oma vigadest, then we're going to miss many times the opportunities that God has for us. Siis me võime ilma jääda mõnikord võimalustest, mis Jumalal on meie jaoks. And then we're going to have to wait for that next opportunity to come along before we can access that blessing. Ja siis me peame ootama, kui nüüd tuleb see järgmine võimalus selleks, et me saaksime osa võtta sellest õnnistusest. Now you need to know this. Tea seda. God doesn't just give you one chance. Jumal ei anna sulle lihtsalt ühte võimalust. Have you ever felt like you missed an opportunity? Ma on sul kõne on see tunne, et ma olen nüüd võimalusest ilma jäänud. You missed a chance for that business or you missed a chance for... Võimalusest ära sellest, sellest äri osa saamaks. Or you missed a chance for that relationship. Või et osa saada sellest suhtest. Or you missed a chance, you know, to, to, to have this in life. Või jäid ilma võimalusest, et see saaks kuuluda sinu ellu. You need to know this. God is a God of second chances. Kuula, Jumal on Jumal, kes annab uusi võimalusi. Third, fourth, fifth. Teisi, kolmanda, neilanda ja viiendaid võimalusi. However many chances it takes to get you there, he'll give them to you. Nii palju võimalusi, nagu sul on vaja, nii palju ta võib neid sul on. Don't think just because you missed one opportunity that, well, I guess I'm not going to have that. Ära arva nüüd, et okei, ühes võimalusest ma lasin sellel minna ja tänu sellel mul ei kuulu midagi. Okay, I thought I was doing the right thing, but obviously not. Noh, Jumal, ma arvasin, et ma tegin õigeid asju, aga tundub, et ei neid. So, I guess I'm not going to have that. See, aga tundub, et seda ma ei saa endale. No, don't limit yourself that way. Ära limiteer innast. You need to know that if you missed one chance, you're going to have another chance. Sa tea, et kui sa ühes võimalusest paned mööda, siis küll tuleb kunagi uus võimalus. We have to face the consequences of our life. Ja nende elu tagajärgedega me peame ise hakkama saama. But you need to know this, other opportunities are going to come. Aga sa tea, et uued võimalused tulevad. And you need to know that, that, that when you make a mistake, ja sa tea seda, et kui sa teed vea, you might have missed that opportunity. Võibolla selle, selle võimalusega sa, sa keerasid nässu kõik. But you need to learn from that. Aga sa peaksid õppima sellest. You need to recognize, okay, that was God and I need, and next time I'm going to see God. Sa peaksid õppima tuvastama, et okei, okay, kuule, seal oli Jumal järgmikord ma tean, et, et kui midagi, midagi sellist tuleb, siis see on Jumala pool. And this is what I believe for, for us and for our, our nation. Ja mina usun seda meie ja meie rafa jaoks. I believe that there's a time coming that God is going to visit this nation again in a very special way. Ma usun, et tuleb varsti aeg, kus Jumal saab näidata enne selle, sellele rafale väga imeliselt. And, and I, I believe this time that we're not going to miss it. Ja ma usun, et sellel ajal me ei pane sellest mööda. That this time we're not going to lose what it is that God is going to do in this Sellel country. korral me ei jää ilma sellest, mis Jumal tahab teha siin. Because we've seen God show up in the past at different places. Ma oleme näinud, kuidas Jumal ilmutab ennast erinevates kohtades. But he was not acknowledged and he was not honored by the people. Aga teda ei tuvastatud, teda ei nähtud inimeste poolt. And because he was not honored, ja kuna teda ei austatud, the, the opportunity for blessing did not remain. 
Jumalus õnnistusele ei jäänud sinna. And blessing was not what it could have been. Ja õnnistused ei saanud olla sellised nagu nad oleksid võinud olla. Had the people began to honor their God. Kui inimesed oleksid hakkanud And so this this nation, I believe, it needs a, another touch from God. I know I do. I know I, I believe in God for, for him to do something special in my life. But I believe that this nation needs to see God in a very real way. And so we need to learn from our past mistakes. And we need to get to a place that we are looking for God and waiting for God to show up. Where we are living our lives saying, okay, God, I'm looking for you today. God, I'm hungry for you. I want to know you. I want to see you. I want, I want to know when it is that you are showing up in my life. And when we see God and when we run to God, again, we're going to see him in people. And when we could say thank you God for, for that person and thank you for that person. Thank you for the gift that they are to me. Man, when we're seeing it that way, not just picking you know, the, the nice people or the pretty lisad, people. Et, okay, me neid, neid välja. The pretty people. Ja, või ilusaid inimesi. Or the sport people. Või sportlik inimesi. No, stop, stop just judging people by that. Ei, ära, 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 ära vaata inimese sellise pilguga. But start picking people because you're honoring them because of who they are. Aga, aga vaata inimestel peale, et sa näed neid tänu sellele, et sa austad neid sellise viisi. Be like David and look and see the gift on the inside of each and every one. Ole nagu Taavet ja, ja otsi seda aaret iga inimese seest. And they will begin to rise in their standard of living to, 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 to match the honor you show to them. Nemad saavad tõusta vastavalt sellele tasemele oma elus, kui, kui sina neid austad. And so God moves as we allow him to move in our life. Ja Jumal liigub uh, nii nagu me laseme ta liikuda enda. And we might not always understand but we need to recognize it. We might not always understand, you know, why is God doing it this way, but we need to recognize, but it's God. You have to know when you're in a God moment in your life. You have to know when you've heard from the Lord. Because you can't honor what you do not recognize. You cannot honor what you do not recognize. And so we need to be looking for God and we need to recognize God when he shows up. Go with me to one more scripture here today and then I'll close. In Luke chapter 2. Luke chapter 2. Uh, this is a story of Jesus going to the temple to be circumcised. He's going to the temple. And, and this was the custom of the day. And in the temple there was a man named Simeon. Ja, ja seal templis oli üks Simeoni nimeline mees. And Simeon saw the baby Jesus. Simeon nägi, nägi baby Jeesust. And he ran up and he grabbed Jesus and he held him in his arms. Ja ta tormas Jeesus, võttis Jeesuse sülle. And this is what he says. Ja mis ta ütleb on see. In Luke chapter 2, we're going to start reading here with verse 28. Luke teises peadükis 28. saimist hakkame lugema. And Simeon took him, Jesus, into his arms and praised God, saying, Sovereign Lord, as you have promised, you now dismiss your servant in peace. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the sight of all people. Mille sa oled valmistunud kõige rahvaste silme ees. A light for the revelation to the Gentiles and for the glory of your people Israel. Valgust, mis on ilmutuseks paganaile ja kirkus sinu rahvale Israelile. And so what is going on here? Mis siin toimub? How many know that babies just look like babies? Kui väga teavad, et beebid või imikud näevad välja tässä nagu imikud. You know, I know every mama thinks that their baby is really special. Ma tean, et iga emme mõtleb, et oi, minu beebi on eriline. There's no baby as beautiful as my baby. Kelegi teise beebi ei ole nii ilus nagu minu beebi. But the truth is this, babies look like babies. Ja tead, teda on selles, et beebid näevad välja nagu beebid. You know, they might have different color hair, different color skin, different color eyes. Võibolla nad on teist värvi nahk, võibolla teist värvi silma, teist värvi juuksed. But a baby looks like a baby. Aga tead, imik näeb välja tässä nagu imik. And you can't just look at a baby and think, oh, there's something really special. 
special about that one. Ja sai samaa tiimiku peale ja sa kuule selle lapsega midagi erilist toimus. You know, you go into a hospital, you look at all the babies and all the things. You see. Aiga sa vaatad kui palju nüüd seal babiesid on ümber ringi. You know, it's surprising not more babies get mixed up, I guess. I don't know. They kind of all look alike. Minu arust nemad kõik täpselt samas kui välja. But um, so Simeon, he's here in the temple. Aga Simeon on siin templis. And there's lots of babies that are coming in to be dedicated to God. Ja seal on palju palju imikuid, kes tuuakse sinna selleks et nad saaks pühendada Jumalale. And then all of a sudden he sees this baby. Ja siis ühel hetkel ta näeb seda imikut. And he runs up and he takes that baby into his arms and says, "Now I have seen the salvation of God. Now I can die." Ja tormab tormab selle lapsi juurde just võtab sülle et Jumal nüüd ma olen näinud seda päästa, mis sa siia toovad. Ma olen näinud seda aastat. Simeon recognized this was a God moment. Simeon tundis ära, et see oli nüüd üks Jumala hetk. This was not like any other moment. See on nagu see ei olnud tavapärane hetk. This was not like any other baby dedication to the Lord. See ei olnud nagu üks tavapärane imiku pühendamine. He says my eyes have seen the salvation of the Lord in this child. And he began to prophesy some things even about us in this day as the Gentiles that serve him. Simeon did not learn this. He recognized this. He did not, okay, let me study this out and see if this is going to be the right child. No, he saw him and he knew on the inside. I'm not sure how. Because here, this is an unwed woman who's you know, a little unwed little girl who had this baby. And he's, he's being raised in a humble carpenter's home. And so it doesn't look like the type of, you know, household we would expect the king to be raised in. I mean, the king should have the very best of the best. Mom and dad are very wealthy. And this is not the case. Just a normal looking baby. And he knew this is a God. And he recognized that and he allowed that to bless his life. And he said, now I can die in peace. Because God, you promised that I would see it before I died and I see it. I can go. Yes, Jumal, sina ütlesid mulle, et, et ma saan ära nägema selle päest ja, ja, ja siis ma võin surra. And so he recognized the gift of God. Sega tundis ära selle Jumala kingituse, Jumala anni. And so for you, you don't need to always learn something to, to have access to it in your life. Nüüd, alati sa ei pea õppima mingisugust asja ära või saama selgu selle mingis asjas enne kui sa saad sellest osa You can recognize something in a moment and step into that blessing. Sa võid tuvastada midagi silma pilkselt ja võtta osa sellest. And you could do it knowing in your spirit by the spirit of God I I'm going to access something. Ja sa võid teha seda teamiselt et et läbi Jumala vaimu ma, ma saan osa võtta sellest. But to do that I need to recognize this is a God moment. Ja selleks et teha seda ma pean tuvastama ära et see on nüüd hetk Jumalat. And then I could step into the blessing that God has for me. Ja siis ma saan astuda selles sõnistusse mis Jumal on minu jaoks. And I, you know I I can't do everything that I need to do in my own strength for my life. And when I realize and understand I need help, I need God. Because in my own strength, I'm going to fail. But I know this. I know that one moment with God can change my life. Amen. One moment where I recognize this is a God moment for me. That can change my life forever. Sometimes I could hear one word from God or one message and say, that's what I needed to go forward. And so one moment, can, can, if you recognize it, can change everything for you. And this is what I want to, want to just end by saying here today. Don't miss your moment with God. For some of you, this might be a moment right here today. Don't miss your moment with God. This could be the day that your life begins to change in a new direction. That you make adjustments to begin to mature spiritually. You, you need to know this. God could do more than you could ask or even imagine. 
imagine. But being sophisticated like we are, sometimes we think, well, I can handle it. Aga oles pühendunud, nagu me vahest, vahest mõtleme, et, et ma saan hakkama küll. You know, I, I don't need God. I, I Mul ei ole Jumalat vaja, ma saan hakkama. But, but when, when things go wrong, the question is this, who are you going to turn to? Kui asjad lähevad täiesti valest, siis küsimus on selles, et kelle poole sa pöördud? You know, we, we, there's only one place to turn to get help. On ainult üks, üks punkt, kui sa saad, üks koht, kui poole saab pöörda abiks. And there's only one God that can help you. On ainult üks Jumal, kes saab aidata sinna. And you need to make sure you are looking to God to be everything that you need him to be. See peaks tegema kindlaks, et Jumal on see, kelle peale sinna vaatad ja et tema on kõik, mis on vajad. And I pray that you will turn to Jesus. Ma pole, et sa pöörduksid Jeesuse sa poole. And that you'll recognize him in your life. Et sina tunneksid ära tema enda elus. And receive him as your Lord and Savior today. Ja võtaksid ta vastu täna oma elu istanda ja päästa. And if you will do that. Ja kui sa teed seda. If you will become a disciplined learner. If you'll become a disciple of Jesus, you're going to begin to walk in this inheritance that God has for you. You're going to begin to walk in the blessings of God in your life. And so when you say, bless me, God, I hope you understand that you're saying, God, I want to grow and I want to mature. When you pray for God's blessing, you're saying, okay, God, I'm ready to grow up a little bit.